Good evening. Um, excited um, to share some new stuff with you here tonight and then to talk a little bit about what we're doing under the hood that you might not see. So let me kick off a screen share here and uh, we'll dive right into it. All right, so here um, at Unstructured, if you're not familiar with us, um, what the way we sort of view kind of our left and right bounds is on the left-hand side is where raw data, unstructured data resides. On the right-hand side, typically writing it to a vector store. So how do you take raw files, no matter what the file format, and get into a machine-readable format? We want to make that easy, and we want to make it seamless, and we want to make it enterprise-grade. That's our mission, right? And so um, in terms of like where we've been focused today, um, it's been mainly REST APIs, right? So you send a raw file in. Um, you get clean JSON back. Um, we've begun building out um, our connector libraries as well as some chunking options um, and so to make that that easy. But um, you know where we're headed is um, more than just the rest API because there's still a whole bunch more that you have to do as a developer to get that data to Chroma, for example, right? You have to make decisions on curating that data, ripping out the noise. you got to make decisions on chunking and embedding, maybe summarization, et cetera. And so we just want that um, want that experience to be seamless, so you can just show up and have, for example, all of your data populated in Chroma, and it's just beautiful and pristine. And so um, we're ramping up for a launch of our platform. Um, we've been working on this for almost a year. Um, it'll be going into beta. Um, we'll have sign up code on the back, uh, on, the, on the last slide, um, in the beginning of February, and you'll get a sneak peek at it today. And so before we dive in, just to give you a sense, right, left-hand side is, is are the data connectors to the raw data, right-hand side, our vector stores, and under the hood, we'll be able to suck in basically anything, render it into a consistent JSON, um, summarize it, curate it, chunk it, embed it, and then write it. We'll have scheduling and a UI on top of it. So with that, let me jump into a quick look at the look at the most basic UI you'll ever see here, and then we'll uh, we'll hop back to talk about what's going on under the hood. So um, in terms of of the UI here, the whole idea here is you're building um, workflows that connect data sources to data destinations and then specifying how you want those transformations um, to, to, to work. And so in this case, we'll um, set up a new workflow here. Let me um, come through here. And so first option, scheduling daily, monthly, we'll have it down to the minute um, depending, depending on the periodicity. And so let's do a new one. We'll do it daily and we'll have it run on Saturday nights at, you know, 12 o'clock, right? Um, in terms of the name, we'll just give it a name of test. And then on the sources, in this case, um, our goal is um, about 15, um, 15 sources on um, the left-hand side and at least the same number on the right-hand side um, by the next month, but that'll grow um, uh, with every quarter. Please let us know which ones are important to you. On the strategies here, if you're, if you're not familiar with the product, um, you can have the auto strategy, which looks at the file type detection and automatically routes it to the most efficient file transformation pipeline. You can also specify it and hard code it. So fast, for example, this, um, if we have extractable text from the document, it'll route it to um, hand-turned um, parsers that we've built, right? Using regexes, Python scripts, and some NLP models. High res is a more typical, um, uh, like a YOLO X plus, uh, plus an OCR, right? Different variants of that. and then. Um, OCR. We'll also have a vision transformer available as well. Um, in terms of the, op uh, um, the options here, um, we're reducing everything down to what we call like a document element. So a title, body text, header, footer, et cetera. And so with that metadata, you can say, look, I want to exclude all the headers and footers, or I don't want text boxes, or um, any number of different options. You can also infer table structures. So look for tables and extract those. And um, we're getting better every week. This is one of our top priorities right now, is table and form extraction across a wide range of file types. What you can also do with that metadata is do really smart chunking. So instead of doing like a rolling chunk window or relying on like GPT-4 for semantic chunking or sentence level chunking, you can go title to title, right? And say, okay, I want the, I want the title. I want all the body text. If there's table in there, I want that down to the beginning of that next title, right? And so that's a variable chunk window, but you're getting all of the semantic, so, um, uh, you know, all of the concepts that are linked within those, um, those top line um, titles, subtitles, et cetera. And so you can capitalize on the, on the document structure in order to do really intelligent um, chunking there. And after you do that, um, so we'll do chunk by title. And in this case, um, you can select multi-page sections. There's some additional functionality on the chunking here. This will continue to 
um, to expand. And then you just hit submit, right? And then once you have that, then you'll have um, your jobs populated. You'll have all of the logs for the jobs, and this will just be running in the background, right? It's just, you just put it on cruise control. Um, similar to Fivetran, we're maintaining the connectors, so you don't have to worry if a, if a connector breaks, we're gonna fix it. Um, and then under the hood, you can have a guarantee that we're routing everything the most efficient um, way possible so that you're not blowing your whole cloud compute process on just pre-processing. So um, we're trying to keep it simple. We'd love your feedback. We'd love you to engage on, on the beta. Um, we launched the, the API, so that just sits in the middle of this. A couple weeks ago, we're getting some, um, some fantastic feedback as well on that. But before I break, I wanna just dive in a little bit deeper for a moment on, um, on what we're doing under the hood here, because I think that this is something that's not really demoable, but it's something that we don't really talk about a whole lot. And so in terms of like our file transformation pipelines, like we think of ourselves in contrast to like intelligent document processing providers. So they're like Google Document AI, for example, um, you have homogeneity in the file types and homogeneity in the document structures, right? We wanna be the opposite. So if you have an S3 bucket with a million files and who knows what, we wanna be able to just take all of that, right? render it into an LLM native format. Um, document layouts, right? Um, if it's a, if you have, if you have slides, if you have scraped HTML, if you have Word documents, if you have old PDFs, it shouldn't matter, right? The same thing should go also with audio and images, which we'll begin to support towards the end of February and beginning of March. Um, in terms of like the dimensions of file transfer of performance for these things, these are all the things that we're thinking about in terms of de delivering like pristine data to Chroma, for example. So like percentage of words missed. So if you use GPT-4 for like file transformation on a PDF, at least in terms of our internal benchmarking, it's, it's missing almost 40% of the words. They're either in the wrong order or it's just completely getting it wrong. Um, we're down, depending on the, on the pipeline, between three and 9%. In terms of the, um, the, the compute efficiency of these, we're about 0.14 seconds per page on the extractable text whereas it's upwards of 20 seconds per page on, on the larger models, right? And so if you extrapolate on tens of thousands of documents or files you know, each day, um, that adds up. There's a lot of different dimensions of performance on table and form extraction, just those in particular, where we're trying to be um, move things down to smaller models, more performant models, or get out of using models entirely on this so we can deliver the latency expectations that are gonna be required to push these prototypes into production. Other things here, um, Tables, if they're in HTML, if they're in PDF, it shouldn't matter. Everything should come back in one unified structured format. Um, this is what it looks like in terms of like right now, what we're doing on benchmarking. This is on CPUs. So we've refactored all of our machine learning models to be performing on horizontally scalable CPU architectures. So you're not burning up your GPU compute on, on the ingest side. And then we're also pulling over all of the existing metadata available per source but then also generating new metadata that you can use um, with, you know, like with Harrison, all the awesome work that Harrison's doing on the retrieval side to capitalize on metadata filtering coupled with like hybrid retrieval, which seems to be like the best bet these days. There's so much rich metadata that we're generating there so you can do really smart metadata filtering on the retrieve. And then um, what you can expect um, coming over the next several weeks, um, lots of different chunking strategies, summarization models, caching after we do the transform, and so you can run different permutations of, um, of the um, chunking and embedding models without having to go and reprocess everything. We'll hold that in state space. You can run different permutations and then write all that to your vector store and then bring your own embedding model. So you can drop that in or you can use an existing one. So with that, that's, uh, that's what we had for tonight. So thanks for your time. Wow.